So today I just wanted to take a quick look at the 1973 Spanish film The Vampire's Night Orgy, also known as La Orgia Nocturna de los Vampiros, but um, the title is definitely not as sexy as it suggests. The film is actually rather slow-paced, it's boring, it's just blah. Um, you really don't have much in the way of gore. You probably get about two booby flashes and that's about it. So. You know, definitely um, not as much of a skin flick as the the title promises. So you um, pretty much have a traveling busload of tourists. They're somehow their bus driver gets uh, murdered or munched on, and so, somehow this crazy magical village appears. So. Instead of just driving on through the night, the tourists decide, well, we're just going to stop for the night because, you know, this suspicious village looks like a good place to rest. Some of them definitely did rest longer than others, obviously. But the film itself just really is just very, very much a bland, basic story. So they've pretty much just come up onto a village full of vampires, which somehow materializes why? I don't know. It just does. Um, you know, it's just magic. We, we just have to believe that. Um, but they're put up in the inn. The night they arrive, there are no villagers whatsoever except for the, the innkeepers. Every single room in the inn is empty, so they've pretty much just got their pick of which area they want. So very much looks like a desert, deserted town. The follow, following morning, it's like the whole village has just come back to life. There are people everywhere, just like nothing had ever happened. One of the things that I actually found very funny, because you've got a village full of vampires, and they obviously only eat blood, drink blood, whatever. Uh, so they've got all of these humans that they can feast upon, but they have to continue this charade of being a, a normal, everyday, boring village, and they have to feed these people so their solution to this which is actually very laughable is you've got this really gross burly guy who walks in and he cuts off some guy's leg so they are basically feeding the tourists a vampire leg so to me the curiosity here is how is that not some semi form of cannibalism because they're feeding pieces of their own to humans and then feasting upon the humans. Um, it, it's just weird logic there, but especially because on the first night someone had been murdered, they very easily could have just recycled that bloodless corpse unless that's some sort of a vampire taboo where you just don't feast off of someone who eats the dead, but it's okay to feast off of someone that eats your own. Um, I, I can't make any sense of it. It's 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 funny to me, but they pretty much just you know cut off this this unfortunate's leg, and it's served to them, I believe, at their breakfast the following morning. Someone does comment that it's an interesting flavored meat, but of course that doesn't stop them from chowing down. Um, so gradually, people do drop off. We have talk about this. Countess, who is the person who gives the order, so apparently this jerk is the the one that ordered the the poor unfortunate guy to to lose his leg. The next scene in which someone loses a limb is actually, I believe, a steel worker. the The poor guy was sharpening the butcher's axe, and then he loses one arm because you know you only need one. You know, spare the other. But <laughs> it, it's just. To me, that's that's probably the the most silly aspect of the film. Even though they're really, it, it's treated seriously. It's it's not a humorous scene. It's just the whole ideology of it is is just ridiculous. But gradually, we, or rather, gra gradually, the tourists themselves discover what's going on, and you've only got just one pair who manages to escape. They get out of there. They warn the authorities. And of course, the cop car drives them back out there to where the village once stood. It's now, once again, just an empty valley. 
and the cop, I guess, is pretty much just familiar with this routine. He's like, eh, whatever. Are you going to get back in the car or not? Uh, and the film just ends abruptly. So there really is no point other than just people die and, you know, you view a few tatas, but there really isn't much going on in the story. It's just very dull. So to my understanding, the only big name that actually came out of this film is Jack Taylor, who is actually an American actor. I'm Obviously the entire film is dubbed over in English and not not American English. They're, they all have British accents, which I guess was just a 70s thing. Um, but Jack Taylor, who was an American actor, he starred in various uh, Spanish films. He worked with the likes of uh, Jess Franco. Um, he also worked with Paul Nashi. So he definitely was, I guess you could say, a name um, of the era, uh, era or, you know, within the uh, Spanish culture films. But um, I would say for myself, mm, probably not the best introduction to this actor. Um, you know, definitely a worse introduction. Um, probably one of the worst ones that one can have. But yeah, I mean, there's really not too much I can say about this film other than um, very basic plot, pretty boring. Um, if you're looking for a time killer film, watch something else. Um, I mean, if you like foreign film or, you know, just Spanish film, um, you know, definitely give it a go, especially if, you know, you, you're more into like the 70s era. Uh, international film, you know, it's it's definitely worth taking a look at. But if you're just looking for something casually to watch just to kill time, um, I wouldn't recommend this. Uh, you'd probably be very disappointed. I mean, I've seen worse films, um, but I mean, other than the humorous moments, which just, you know, once again, just give me so much to to ponder about just because it's a confusing scenario to me. But there really isn't too much going on here. Um, I wish I could say something positive. I mean, the acting is decent. Um, some of the dummy, some of the dubbing is a bit rough. I mean, very much like when someone watches a an, uh, a martial arts film of the '70s, and you know, sometimes the the mouth is still moving after the voice has stopped. Um, but you know, it's you know, it's kind of hard at times to get an exact match. But um, you know, it's not a perfect film. It's not that bad. Um, I would say definitely give it a go if you like, but um, definitely um, the dubbing to me is the weirdest part, just the fact that it was dubbed over um, in British accents, but um, I do understand that that was uh, normal at that time. But um, that is pretty much all I have for you guys today, and I will talk to you later.